Wrestling fans, we explode into Christmas for the ninth annual Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive Cyber Fan Fest. A human sea of superstar guests have come to MWF Studios for live interviews, tributes, and virtual autograph signings. The good news is, if you miss these superstar signings, we have individual autograph photos available as well as all-inclusive VIP packages throughout the season. If you want them for yourself or to give us a holiday gift for Christmas, Get the order in by December the 19th. On Christmas night, we'll reveal the winner of the massive Christmas week mega raffle where one lucky fan wins an entire jackpot of prizes again to benefit the Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. 2020 has been a brutal year for the economy as well as our toy drive efforts. We could use any and all the help you could give us. Be part of the professional wrestling community. If you're going to take part in any toy drive this year, let it be one where we update Santa Claus's GPS in honor Paul Bearer's memory. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com now. Superstar Billy Graham. Oh, one of my favorites right now. The tie-dye shirts. He was supposed yeah. to be in your chair tonight, as a matter of fact. Uh, that's see, a that's, story that's my life. You know, time. I was always the guy, if nobody showed up, get the Duke. <laughs> <laughs> so the Sheik didn't make it, huh? No, he's a super guy, superstar Billy Graham, and uh, yeah, superstar Billy Graham. Get a little off here, but uh, yeah, the tie dye shirts and everything. Fantastic guy. He says that he was ten years ahead of his time. Would you agree with that? Uh, ten years ahead of his time. Could he have been a Hogan if there was no Hogan? If he kept going strong with that gimmick? I think he. I think what it was is we had so many muscle men at the time. I mean, he was really a bodybuilder, uh, uh, Graham, mm. and he was a superstar, Billy Graham. He was really uh, a bodybuilder. But then you had so many uh, uh, other guys professional. Like you had at the same time, you had Ken Patera in the area at the same time, who was a an Olympic weightlifting champion, you know, and whatnot. So I. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. In hindsight, uh, uh, I think, okay, yeah, he probably would have been, uh, would have been right up there in the top three. Do you think they made a mistake to take the championship belt off him so soon? Where they yeah. had, it seemed like there was a plan to go I, from Bruno to Graham to Backlund. They kind of kept going with well, that plan, even though Billy Graham was, you know, as hard as you could get. Bob Backlund was no slouch. Believe me. Bob Backlund was a... a he was a, a strict wrestling. He didn't go the bodybuilding and all that, but I'll tell you what, he knew wrestling like nobody I ever knew. He could tie you up in, a, in knots in an instant. And he was really, really great at what he did. But I think the problem being, it wasn't Bob Backlund that was the problem. It was the way Vince McMahon wanted to uh, present Bob Backlund as a bad guy. And Bob Backlund was really, he was just a good guy, and he did not want to do the bad guy image. So I think that's where McMahon and Bob had a falling out. But as far as being a, uh, a wrestler, uh, I'll tell you what, he probably knows more wrestling than half, than three quarters of the wrestlers that are out there today. Oh, definitely. And that have been out there. Uh, I've wrestled Bob too, and I had them, some uh, great matches with him, you know. And he just says, you know, boom, boom. He he had me in holes that I he was, I was just wow, shit, he's making me look great. You know? <laughs> chicken wing, that was his yeah. favorite thing. Yeah. Was yeah. But, the chicken wing, yeah. that was it. That was yeah, his but favorite. He, well, he could end. turn around. Yeah, Eighty-two, we started that. Yeah, yeah. But no, but uh, back to superstar Billy Graham. Uh, I think he probably would have been, but I think too many uh, other issues had come up, okay? They uh, wanted to switch the belt from uh, uh, the uh, Morales, was it? No, Bruno Bru went to, dropped it to Superstar. Bruno dropped it to Superstar, and then they went from Superstar to Morales. No, to Bob Backlund. Bob Backlund, oh, yeah. God. Please, don't, don't ever go to ask me about history on wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll have another drink. <laughs> Jack, I'll ask you. You were, you were big at the time, in more ways than one. Do you think that lovely. superstar Billy Graham, how hot could he have been if they transitioned him, not only let him keep the belt, but to go from heel to babyface 
and maybe feud with the three dons of managerial, so to speak. Now, back then, see, now, Vince Sr., he did not like bad guys as champion. I'm actually surprised he held it as long as he did. And I know he drew tremendous houses. Uh, he not quite in Boston, though. His match with Guerrilla did not draw too well. Now, of course, probably because it was against Tony Guerrilla more than it was for poor superstar Billy Graham. But the Graham Rhodes feud, oh, my God. They sold out everywhere mm -hmm. they went. Uh, Graham, I truthfully don't. I don't see him in that Hulk Hogan role, and I think Johnny would agree with me. Um, would he have been? A, he would have been a good baby face, but like I said, uh, Vince Senior did not like to turn his heel either back then. You had your occasional ones, but mm. not a lot. Not like they do today. Forget it. Johnny, your thoughts on personal feelings aside, so the superstar Billy Graham is the world champion. Do you think he could have? been more successful with a longer run. He feels he certainly could and is very vocal about it. I don't know how vocal he is, to, uh, vocal enough to sell his Legends ring. Um, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know, another story for another time, as you keep saying, but uh, I have to agree with the Jackal. Uh, I think uh, Superstar Billy Graham had his run. He did what he had to do. I don't think he could ever be a Hulk Hogan. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that Graham was Superstar Billy Graham, and, and I say this all the time. Hulk Hogan was at the right place at the right yeah, time. Exactly. Vince was looking for somebody yeah. new, somebody different. Here's this big, humongous bodybuilder from Venice Beach, California, and I, who can't wrestle, mm -hmm. but he had one thing that nobody else had, charisma. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what they were lacking. You know, Billy Graham had the muscles, the brains, but he lacked that, that extra charisma. And he wasn't very good in the ring either. <clears throat> Who's that? Billy Graham. No, but Billy Graham had something that, you know, when Billy Graham went in that ring, either loved him or you hated him. Yeah, he yeah. knew he was doing in there, though. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and presence, uh, yeah. some of the things they don't teach today, and I don't know if Pete would agree with me, I don't know if the Jackal or you will agree with me, when they train young wrestlers today, the one thing they don't teach them is ring psychology. They teach them how to do moves. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah, and you know what? If you don't have the psychology, you can never do the moves because it's meaningless. You talk about selling, sell it. Why? What's the whole idea mm -hmm. of being in there? to drop to the mat and go one, yeah. two, three. Well, yeah. anybody can do yeah. that. But, and I'm not being wise with you, but no, the ring <coughs> psychology it is takes, so important. It takes years to get that ring psychology down. But they it don't even something. teach it. They don't teach you the yeah. reason why. And you know, Billy Graham, he understood it. He did it. There's a guy that, that had the crowd up, down. That is something that comes with, they call job training. It's you, yep. you learn it as you're on the job. It'll yep. just come to you gradually. Yep. You know? And I think Superstar Billy Graham, I don't know if you'll agree, Jackal, um, I think Superstar Billy Graham did well, and he went as far as he could with what he had. I don't think he could have gone beyond that point. Um, that's why Vince did what he did. And he also didn't have uh, too many good contenders. I mean, Gorilla Monsoon it was <clears throat> almost done at that point. You're talking 77. Yep, yep. Um, I mean, granted, he retired three years later, but he was only in the occasional matches back then. Yep. Uh, Mill Masqueris, who they brought in just for Billy Graham, and they had a couple of good matches at MSG. Uh, you know, Guerrilla, Strongbow, and he even wrestled Zabisco. In fact, Larry way Zabisco. before Zabisco became a big star. Yep, yep, yep. Well, I would agree. I, I think the Jack and I are on the same page on this one, and I think Pete's on the same page. Yep. Good champion, did his time. Can't take it but, away from him. You know, oh, no. just wouldn't have had Great. it to. Be, being Hogan shows. I don't think you could have done what Hogan did. You you make no. you allude to it several times about, and you're right, Strongbow could get that crowd when he went down yeah. and he started doing his little dance, and the more you beat on him, the more yeah. he got yeah. that strength yeah. to come back, and the crowd went nuts, absolutely nuts. I don't think, excuse me, I don't think Billy could bring a crowd to that crescendo in that fashion. Yeah. So he did what he had to do. Hogan yeah. was one of the few guys outside of Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, yeah. and The Rock. And we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Oh, but way ahead. Yeah. Graham's defense, he never really had the opportunity. He was a heel true, at that yeah. time. That's true. But and I don't think the 1986 version of Billy Graham no. was no. going to in inspire no. No, a like reaction. And not going to improve it. No, it wasn't. But the fact of the matter was that heel or face, you could do many things. Whatever your character was, you could do it. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you, Jekyll. And I think Pete, again, feels the same way. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live.